Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be discussing our top 10 figures of 2021. A little bit of Hero Clicks news from the uh, WizKids Twitterverse and a little Thread Dead Redemption. This is episode 390. Five? Five? I'm your sexy ranch hand co host, Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, okay. okay. six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools it's not witcher nonsense i'm gonna make hero clips like that forever are you kidding me <laughs> hey google back some let's attack him because he's a jerk wow 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 Eyelash for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day including all the latest hero click singles and sealed products make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Dot com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is your Dialogue Trio, who's champion, Simeon. What's going on? Really tired of whiz kids. That's why I stopped playing their game, Calder. Oh, gosh. Because I'm so tired of them being mean to me and not releasing my green adult dragon. <sighs> I mean, I know what you mean. You go through green adult dragon withdrawals. It's real tough to try to carry on, uh, try to live without that uh, green adult dragon in your life. I, Where, I just... wave two, WizKids? I stopped playing your game, but I still Gosh. demand answers, WizKids. <sighs> people see, like, it's like we make fun of that. Like, we make fun of it. But people like that exist. Like, this isn't a joke. Well, this isn't like a joke, ladies and gentlemen. People like this, they exist. I'm dead they listening like to your podcasts and YouTube's Dial H. How dare you disrespect my X Men Calderness? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just turning into gracious. like a snake person. <laughs> yeah, what is that? What is this? I don't know. Have some of this apple <laughs> Like It's like, what? <laughs> what are you all of a sudden? Oh, goodness gracious. Well, I don't know. We got a fun show. I'm looking forward to it. Simeon, what's, let's j- jump right into it, man. What made you happy this week? This week, what made me happy was, uh, you know, holidays are here. Um, I'm kind of burned out on it already. And it, like, I don't know. There's only so much holly and jolly a man can take before he snaps. Uh, but no, uh, my work did cut us out early and... Um, so this week I only worked three days next week. I'm only working three days. It's pretty nice. It's just, uh, you know, a little bit of a break before stuff really starts hitting the fan. This busy time of year, everyone's like, all right, take all that Christmas junk down and get back to normal capitalism where we no longer support joy and happiness. (laughs) So that's going to be a rough couple of weeks as we, you know, remove all the happy, cheerful people and replace them with uh, the not the new Dodge F ten thousand and uh, all that fun stuff. Hey. All right, right on. Uh, you know what made me happy this week? I got some Christmas shopping done. Drove uh, drove up to Sioux Falls. You know, went to the mall, went to downtown. I went to Rainbow, bought a brick empire, uh, and you know, got some Sioux Falls <laughs> shopping done. Did a uh, did a lot of buying, buying a lot of people presents uh, for my friends and family, and you know, definitely. Who on your spend. list wanted the the brick of empire? Uh, Who'd you buy that? You for? know, people, people, Simeon, lots of people. Uh, you know, I was uh, myself. I bought it for myself. <laughs> uh, I, I deserve a Christmas present too. Okay, I bought it for me. It's for me. So. Uh, yeah. Yup. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna pretend what happened. You know, I pulled Venom Magneto. I bought that brick for 135 sold Venom Magneto today for 150 Everything Dang. else was free. It's that's a good $15. turnaround. That's a, yeah, that's a Pretty solid turnaround. turnaround. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, that's what made me happy this week. Good time. I went to Chipotle for the first time in years. Um, that was cool. Yeah, no, just a little doing some Christmas shopping. It was a good time. Are you a Chipotle or Cadoba person? Uh, I think I like Cadoba more because I, I prefer um, a quesadilla over a burrito. Okay. So, I yeah. yeah I have not had Chipotle since Cadoba has been an option. Um, yeah. 
granted when I was living in my like smaller town, Kearney, um, there was only the one option, which was Cadoba. And I think that like sealed Chipotle's fate in my eyes. I was like, you are dead to me, Chipotle. I don't care how big your burritos are. So, yeah. I'm no longer your customer, Chipotle. Oh, gosh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Your there it is. queso is not as good as <laughs> Cadoba's queso Diablo. <laughs> Case, queso Diablo? Yeah, that's... Bio Diablo? What? Queso, queso Diablo. Queso Diablo. That's their, their spicy queso. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of a Western song. Pardon me. Fine. Down in the little town of Queso Diablo. Well... They call him Caballo Diablo, half horse, half devil, they say. Caballo Diablo, the outlaw. You know, you know. Which half is horse, though? Is it the top half? I... See, like, Mr. Ed, and he talks knows? to, like, Wilbur, and... Uh, I don't like that. Then walks around. I don't like that at all. <laughs> it's, it's like the fly, except Wilbur and Mr. Ed got stuck in the machine. Uh, ugh, no. Jeff Goldblum came out with like, like a it. horse head. And like it's just it. it's a good movie. It, hmm, is it? I uh, hasn't been made. <laughs> so the jury's that's still about, out. That's what I'm about to say. Simeon Simeon uh, has been writing quite a few screenplays. Yeah, uh, yeah. During <laughs> during podcast before the podcast, <laughs> uh, we're gonna we got some pitches uh, to make, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna. Yeah, there's there's some great there's some great stuff going on. Anyways, whiz kids, when you push a man too far, <sighs> he does live in a society, doesn't he? Oh gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Stop! Dial H for hero clicks. You have pushed me to my edge, and now I shall unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what every listener is currently thinking. So I yeah, I probably like, hey, can we uh start the show now, please, please. Uh, so, let's go ahead and jump into the quick news that we got this week. And by this week, I mean two weeks ago, and we are remembering to talk about it. So, if you uh, weren't up to date on WizKids Twitter, December 10th, so not quite, uh, yeah, two weeks by the time you're going to hear this. They posted, since I think PAX Unplugged was happening, they said if we had a booth or something was happening, some convention somewhere was happening, they said if we had a booth at a convention, this is what we'd be showing off. Heroclix Edition. It was a brick of War of Realms, a brick of Disney+, Plus, the token pack for Disney+, Plus, and then the starter for War of Realms. All of these things, the box art, the, the boosters, the fast horses, the tokens, we have all seen before. Yeah. We have literally seen it all before. However, there was one cool thing that we hadn't seen before, and that is a Phoenix Force Sentinel. Uh, very cool design. Doesn't look to be a re-sculpt at all of any prior Sentinel. Uh, it's a very sleek gold and gunmetal black gray type look um and it looks to have a little bronze tab it's gonna be a little le figure here coming soon but yeah a phoenix force sentinel for those of you that are fans of sentinels fans of phoenixes i might know a person who really is is all up in a a phoenix uh place where they live and then he's a big sentinel guy you could say he has a certain sentinel shaped part of his body uh, people have been known to talk about. I feel like he would really like a, a sentinel that is like also maybe like one or a even Phoenix. like three of these. Like he a, might want three of these. Yeah, he might. Yeah, he might want more for no three. particular reason. Reason that, that number yeah. would resonate, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is good to note that this uh, this figure is not the like standard two by two that could come in a booster. So it's hard to tell yes. from the picture, but it looks roughly at least half the height of a booster. So probably taller than Master Mold. Um, Locking this in as definitively, (laughs) like unless they release a super booster set, this would not fit in like the AI boosters or um, what was the other set? The X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga. It wouldn't fit in those. So yeah, it is more than likely a convention exclusive or some sort of prize support down the line for some yet un. I don't know. They didn't give us any information on this thing at all. Um, I can see that it has flight and more than one lightning bolt. 
That is what I can tell. Oh, awesome. I mean, I don't have much else to say about it. It's a pretty cool black yeah. gold sentinel. If you guys want to look at it, it's on the WizKids Twitter. Not cool. But uh, yeah. Besides that, I believe there was some Fantastic Four OP stuff that was spoilt. Pretty much, we I think we pretty much know everything that's going to be like team up card slash legacy card. Yeah, we slash, have. Uh, all we've the seen stuff. the all the dials for like Reed Richards Alpha, um, Invisible Woman comes in at a hundred and tw- or two hundred and fifty, a hundred and forty, or sixty five points. So she's this big cosmic energy um she's what captain universe sue storm i guess um whopping 13 attack on her 250 point dial two stop clicks um yeah it's it's a cool piece uh the stop clicks give her can't be healed (laughs) with barrier so probably one of the weakest stop clicks yeah as far as stop clicks go um but yeah, she she's an interesting piece. I really do like the the combo that her um, speed power gives. It's you know I've just had about enough of you, which is such a Sue thing to say, I guess. Um, it gives her force blast, hypersonic speed. When Invisible Woman knocks a character back and their knockback path is blocked, after resolutions you deal that character one pen damage, almost like knockback damage is back. So doesn't say oh, exactly. No if their knockback path is blocked by I'm guessing because it's not technically block if you knock them off of a building or knock them off of elevated but if you knock them into elevated or into blocking or into another character which should be fairly easy to do um, all you have to do is hit so it is kind of cool that we got that that missing mechanic back of knockback damage and one specific figure um i don't know where this human torch is from but he's got the politician keyword which i don't normally see on johnny so that's cool and then his big thing is uh when establishing theme teams characters on your starting force within humans keyword gain the fantastic four keyword so there's that um did had we seen the silver surfer or the thing because we have magma thing who is kind of neat for know. 60 points. I think Silver Surfer we might have seen. Starts with four light tokens. Free, remove a light token, and Silver Surfer can use Pulse Wave, Knockback. When he uses Knockback, he may place them up to six squares instead of three. Gets with uh, lower on the dial. Silver Surfer gets Blades, Claws, Fangs, Giant Reach of three. When Silver Surfer makes a close attack, you may remove a light token. If you do, opposing characters can't use probability control and can't reduce damage below one. Stop click with super senses. Can't be healed. When this power is first revealed, remove all light tokens and heal another friendly character that many clicks. I think we did see him. It's a cool sculpt. I mean, it's... Sorry. It's the same sculpt that we've had three times now. Or uh, this yeah this thing um I mean, we've had all of these three times at least right because it was the right. starter the deep cuts and then this these are all so this is like the, the third iteration it's a third cool time yeah paint job is what i mean it yeah. is yeah um magma thing comes in at 60 points full dial of charge uh clicks two th- he's only four clicks long so clicks Two through four have exploit. He's got four damage for his first two clicks and then three damage for his last two. He has a special attack power his whole dial that is poison, super strength. So this is the the magma thing. Um, that gives him poison. Clobbering time in stereo. I don't know what that means, but great. Uh, if another friendly character named the thing hit this turn, the thing can use flurry, which is kind of cool. Um Wish it would work with Thing robots, but that's fine. Uh, Reclaiming power from the other Fantastic Four is the trait, and that is when Thing uses the Fantastic Four team ability to heal, he heals two clicks instead. Otherwise, the Thing can't heal, which is great because Thing has two stop clicks at the end of his four-click long dial. So if you play this with the uh, 50-point Thing, the Earth-X Thing that has Buzz and Chuck... And you find a way to KO one of those bystanders, 
you can heal him back to top from click four or click three. Um, but yeah, and so stop clicks again, reduce regen by one, and he's not using regen when he uses the Fantastic Four team ability, so he can heal fully from that. That's decent little piece. I don't know if 60 points, if he's that great. He's kind of bland, but, you know... Um, I guess if you didn't realize, I did mention that uh, the thing has super strength. Um, I don't know if... Let's see, Silver Surfer has Perplex. So all of these guys have unbenched powers because, of course, this was the storyline that was essentially going to run in the summer before Wonder Woman. So I think it's safe to assume that all of these are based on the old rules. So we'll have, similar to like Eternals, we'll have powers that are unbenched, seemingly unbenched for this, but maybe not going forward again. Real neat. Um, I guess in addition to this, we also, we've seen a couple legacy cards and they're releasing some team up cards for previous sets. So, I mean, they're, it's weird cause they're legacy cards, which is so weird. Like there's no reason they need to be silver like that unless they are just silver and they're not actually legacy cards, but yeah, the, the team up cards are cool. Cause you know, even though team ups had already existed when that set came out, they just weren't in the wheelhouse for whatever reason to put team ups in that set. So it's cool. We're getting them now though. So I can't totally argue with it. So yeah, it's neat. That is, uh, that's the OP kit. Simeon, do you know if your store is going to be, uh, running these, I assume they'll be running the events, but how yeah. they, how they're going to try to do it. Are they going to do like, I know a while so, ago when we looked at this, they mentioned some weird way of doing it. So I spoke to my judge about this, and I believe that he said the kit supports, each kit supports four players. So if you have a normal 12 players at your venue, you get three kits that covers, you know, 12 players. Um, and I assume that's these new sculpts and dials for like the, the switch click uh, main Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, those guys. And then I'm assuming the prize kits will have the legacy cards and team up card kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think what we're doing is we're just going to shoot for, because we might have, we might have like Wakefield come down. I don't know if we'll get anyone from South Dakota coming down. It's not that big of an event. Uh, yeah. And then we're just going to do them kind of like on weekends we might do it on a regular thursday night but we'll probably just do kind of like these mini little tournament things every so often but yeah uh we're thinking like 16 should be more than enough to cover what we normally get and then some yeah. so hopefully we're not like you know all of a sudden people fly out from all over to come get our limited edition invisible women's and things and human torches and whatever. Oh yeah, you know, you know they're gonna be flocking Simeon. There's no one else in this entire nation gonna be getting those figures except for you guys. Well, I uh, I think that's pretty much it for news. I feel good. And moving on to the main bulk of the show, where we're gonna do our top ten hero hooks 2021 uh, personally, and then kind of changing our list a little bit so we fit. The parameters for this thread in this week's Thread Dead Redemption. Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points, neither, but seeing I do just fine. I said that in like, as if it were like this week's Web Redemption. I don't know why. <laughs> I was channeling some Tosh, Tosh point energy. Or, yeah, yeah, Tosh point no energy there. Uh, Simeon, if we want to, uh, run, I don't know, do you want to like run down our, our lists first and then talk about this thread and then see like how we would have to change our lists to fit the parameters of this thread as well? Um, I mean, what do you, what do you think? I think maybe, uh, we give our top 10 list right now, then we kind of go yeah. into this thread so, a little bit. Yeah. Well, just on the surface, 2021, we only had... We had House of X, Fantastic Four, Future Foundation, Wonder Woman 80th, and X-Men Rise and Fall. Technically, I don't know if you'd call Eternals a full set. That's a gravity feed. So technically only five full sets released this year. 
and then we had some WizKid exclusives, um, some like Fast Force or starters, yeah. Fast Force, that kind of junk thrown in between. Yeah. So technically only five full five-figure booster sets and one gravity feed. Um, just to keep in mind. So it's been a, what would you call it? Like a, a less than average year as far as clicks releases I, go. Yeah. I would say so. It's less than average. It's, you know, yeah. it was a little, we had some slow, slow, uh, I don't know, so, parts of the year here and there. <laughs> yeah. Going yeah. forward with our list, just keep in mind that um, we were relegated to that, that smaller right. than average kind of thing. So uh, I won't, I, I'm not going to say you'll see, uh, like, Simi and I probably won't choose figures all from one set, you know, um, but some people may feel like that's what they would do. <laughs> That's what right. they'll do. <laughs> some, uh, yeah. people some people definitely ha- have <clears throat> their favorites <clears throat> that we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I can, uh, right. I'll, uh, I can just rattle through my top 10 really okay. quickly, and you can do your top 10. I was thinking maybe we do back and forth, but I think it might just be easier just to like rattle through each other's top 10. Or do you want to go back and forth? It's no, that's, to do back yeah. Forth. Uh, yeah. Let's okay. just go through and do like a quick reason why yeah one quick character. reason why maybe what you know what you played them liked about them mechanics whatever uh so my top 10 number 10 is going to be dr Aaliyah gregor i know shocking a figure from house of x um it technically released this year so we're going to count it because i don't think he wanted to count it last year for this one dude's thread but either way she would have made the list she just does a uh, unique modifier plus one stats uh for friendly bystanders within five squares um that's just awesome i play bystanders a lot scientist is a solid keyword for bystanders and alia gregor is just perfect just fits that role very well uh number nine we have dakin dakin daken Dak Ian, however you want to pronounce this guy's name. Uh, it's totally up to you. But I had a lot of fun. Played him in Sealed uh, for the Omaha Rise and Fall. His full speed charge was super fun to play with. The poison tokens that stop healing and stop clicks was awesome. Even though he's very basic, you know, only has toughness, blades, you know, 11 for 3. Um, he's really fun. Plus, he was long. I mean, long overdue for a remake. Simeon, I sure agrees, since it was Web of Spider-Man or whatever right. since we last got this guy. And it was like a solid remake. It wasn't crazy overpowered. It was it's a really fun casual dial. It's a strong dial. And I had a lot of fun in sealed. He probably made that seal the most enjoyable uh that it could have been. Otherwise, it would have been an X-Men sealed event. I would have wanted to blow my brains out. Number eight, this is where we're getting into uh some some better fan favorite here territory. Let Red Sun Lex Luthor. You might be surprised. He appears this low on the list, but he was kind of difficult to play. He's got a wonky dial. I think I he knew. I think if pushing damage uh, wasn't what it is, you know, uh, by that I mean if it still existed, it might, you know, he would have probably moved up. I probably would have played him a lot more. Uh, but because I have to kind of pull some wonky stuff in order to get him to pop off, Lex Luthor is down here, number eight on the list. But he does complete the Red Sun set. I mean, the hero of Red Sun needed to be made. It's ridiculous that he wasn't before. <laughs> it's it's a shame. Can I tell you, um, he, he was on the winning team at the Eagles Unofficial Worlds event. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, wow. With the uh, Emperor Gladiator. I'm not sure what the dynamic exactly was. Man. How he kicked off or what? Emperor Gladiator's uh, got Mastermind, so... Yeah. You know, Mastermind, yeah. Maybe just carry him around. And then, yeah, Yeah. his whole... uh, He spits out those bystanders that have immune until your next turn, and then he can Mastermind to those bystanders, which... Okay. It's legit. That's legit. No, that's, that's a legit team. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So, and there's that. You know, Mastermind, easiest way probably to get him to work. Um, There's other ways to damage him, but it's probably the best. But yeah, dude, Lex Luthor... Obviously, Lex Luthor is one of my favorite characters ever, so super awesome getting that specific version of him made. Uh, at number seven, now this is, once again, a uh, set, it just came out, and I haven't had the chance to play any of these figures, but because they just purely exist and they look fun, uh, that's why any anything from Empire is on this list. So, Ricky Barnes. So, Ricky just has very cool, very cool dial. A very Captain America-esque um run and gun, punching, you know, not going to take no BS from anybody. 
just a very awesome dial. A uh, very cool side Captain America character. She did go by Nomad. She was the character I was thinking of, so I was happy about that. Um, and so, yes, I am happy that we finally get to have Ricky Barnes. Uh, if this were the list that Hujibo wants us to be, then in this spot would be the Wonder Woman Green Lantern instead. Uh, that's where I would place him, I guess. Um, does not mean he's equal to her, obviously, but I... I liked him a lot. He's just a solid taxi, mostly because he has the soldier keyword. Uh, he's Hal Jordan, so he's not as cool as he could be. He's not the best Green Lantern, but, you know, he's whatever. Uh, but, yeah, he's also really cool, very solid figure, a very fun figure to play. Number six would be Ultron Pym. He just looks so awesome to play. I love mission points. Simeon, I know Simeon likes mission points. We both think that's dope. Yeah. As your current mission point uh, champion in a official tournament... Uh, yeah, official, two unofficial, official whatever. Wins. Two official mission point wins, yeah, in 400 silver. In a, in a um, single tournament. In a single tournament, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Ultron Pym's got to be up there. I cannot wait to play a mission point team with him, the other Ultron, whatever else. You know, I think it's going to be really, really fun. So, yeah, I had to, I had to toss him up there. Tentatively, I don't know if this might honestly change throughout the recording of this show, but I did have Psycho Man as my whatever Hujibo list pick. Um, Psycho Man is only because he is from a storyline uh, that had Howard the Duck. It's from a Fear Itself book. Uh, they were the Fearful Four. It was Howard the Duck, She-Hulk, uh, Nighthawk, and Frankenstein's Monster. And they fought Psycho Man. The old Psycho Man sucked, obviously. And this new Psycho Man is a lot better. So it was just cool to get an updated Psycho Man. The object is really good. I'm also kind of giving a shout out to that object in helping me win my Master Mold tournament. Without it, I don't know if I would have beat Kevin's double null team. Like, just genuinely. Like, straight up. I, I do not think I would have. That would've team would have been really rough. Yeah, you would have had really, rolled really, bad. really well. Yeah, well, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he would have yeah. had to roll really bad. That's the only way I would have been able to win without getting this object. And really, that game was decided by, like, one attack that was made. Because he did pick up the object. And if I didn't um, hit that or whatever, kill that one, I can't remember how the game. But, yeah, basically, that that was huge. Um, next up, number five, mid-area here, Zeus. Dude, I played Zeus in almost every Wonder Woman sealed. I got that crazy lucky. Um, I love Zeus. The stop clicks, the... Uh, penetrating damage in the set with no invincible, the mystics, the uh, Zeus kids is twenty five point off coupon. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> like the uh, no, he's totally not a hundred, two hundred points. Uh, he's awesome. Yeah, I Zeus was super fun to play. I just had a ton of joy playing him. I mean, shooting one sealed, I was able to play two of him. It was dope. Love always mix boosters around kids. Always mix boosters around. That's clearly the best way to play sealed. <laughs> Um, so yes, it was. Zeus is just a super fun character to play. Um, yeah. Uh, number four, uh, sticking with the mythology thing here, we have ba -ba -da -ba, Ares. So, this is just another mission point guy. Ares is who I got my two mission points wins with. Uh, I like the allied soldier, the German soldier. I like all his mechanics that he does. Plus, he's Ares. He's God of War. It's like so cool. So boss. Um, if this were a Hujibo list, um, so just a spoiler, number three is Captain America from Empire. But if this was a Hujibo list, I would put Ares at number three, and then I would put my placement of what I chose for Captain America at number four, which would be the She-Hulk Legacy card. So normally, number three would be Captain America. Uh, don't like the swap. Love the dial. Very fun Captain America dial. It's also the only Steve Rogers we got this year, so he has to be on the list, and he got to be in the top three. Um, but if he isn't allowed for a top ten, it's going to be the She-Hulk Legacy card. I love this version of She-Hulk, and sadly, it's not as discounted as I want it to be, but it's uh, it's still fun. Uh, She-Hulk brings a lot to the table, and she does her whole cool no primes thing, which is a new updated thing that only this version of She-Hulk does. So this is just, you know, a a straight upgrade to the legacy card that I think is probably why they didn't change her point cost that much because they added another trait. So that is cool, and I did like her. Number two and number one. Uh, maybe a surprise for a lot of people, but number two is Red Lantern Guy Gardner. Well, huh? I love, I lo I know, I know. Whoa, how is he not number one? What can number one be? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's Red Lantern Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner is my favorite DC character. The Red Lantern version of him is iconic. 
Uh, this version of him hits like an at like a Mack truck and has the cool uh, chainsaw construct. I got a lot of fun play out of this guy Gardner. I was able to basically one shot an entire team with Guy Gardner and Stardust, so maybe they go hand in hand. Um, but yeah, I, I love this guy Gardner so much. He feels so so boss, and I just I, I can play him so much. It's he's so fun to play. I love playing this dude. I also going to sound super repetitive. But he's wasn't just awesome. he uh, given to you by your grandpapa? When you what? first started playing, when I, when I first started playing Hero I don't, I don't my even think we knew. Nobody will ever get this, but I don't even think we You're actually not get it. made no. that reference ever. So no, we didn't. Which we should have. We really should have. Yeah, it's hilarious. That was like midnight yeah. brainstorming. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. Red Lantern got younger. So number one spot. Drum roll. Probably because of how this figure made me feel when this figure was finally released. How it felt like there was a glistening glimmer of hope. It's just the idea of a figure from this property coming out. Uh, I went absolutely nuts for it. I already like who this figure was based off of. Uh, and their career was very fun. They had great energy. Um, and this character is the Ultimate Warrior. Seeing that the Ultimate Warrior was going to be released uh, made me rejuvenated that the idea that WWE wrestling figures aren't totally dead in hero clicks. Plus, the Ultimate Warrior is really, really cool. He brings so much energy to the ring. It was awesome to see that that got made. And I honestly was probably more pumped for the idea of Ultimate Warrior than I would have been for uh, see-through John Cena. Because this is a figure we didn't even know was going to exist. And then it's like, hey, not only do you not know this figure was going to exist, um, it's out. You can buy it. And I'm like, yes, awesome. Um, so I got pumped. I made my ultimate lawyer costume, um, which is just a really stupid bad pun off of warrior and the word lawyer, um, all that stuff. And I got to do ultimate warrior face paint because uh, I was excited. I was just excited that we were getting like there was no other figure this year that I felt the need to sort of cosplay, you know, cosplay that figure. Um, cause I was just, I was just that jazz, that pumped for the ultimate warrior. And I'm so happy he was made. He's a solid figure. He's really cool and he's really fun to play. And I am just like, wow, it, the joy I felt when that figure was showed off cannot compete to any other figure. So that is my top 10 list. Ollie Gregor, Dakin, Lex Luthor, Ricky Barnes, or Green Lantern, Ultron, Pym, or Psycho Man, Zeus, Ares, or She-Hulk, Captain America, Guy Gardner, and the ultimate warrior. Nice. Simeon, you guys take it away. Yeah. Okay, uh, my my top ten is not going to be. I did it in order of release, so my my ten is going to be like the the earliest in this year that it released, and then my one will be the last thing. First up is out of House of X. Absolutely nothing from House of X made. For the <laughs> list. So honorable mention. There was stuff in there like people are surprised that I don't like old man Phoenix as much as they think I would, but I'm like, man, it just doesn't, doesn't feel as good as I wanted it to. I'm always disappointed with like the big cosmic dudes for some reason. Um, but that would be my honorable mention would be old man Phoenix. If I had to pick one from house of X. So first actual one, number 10 in mine is going to be red ghost from fantastic Four future foundation. Uh, he's a rare he spits out the super apes. He's got perplex. He's got, you know, phasing teleport stealth. Um, it's just fun. Free once per game, you generate three bystanders. I don't know how that's not better than it. I mean, I know it's because the bystanders aren't that great, but it's just a really fun figure. He's not unique, so you can play multiples and just spam monkeys all day long, and it's really fun. Um, he's probably. One of my favorite bystander generators, definitely in like the last couple years. The only thing keeping him out of being like one of the, my favorites of all time is he can't keep making the monkeys. Once he makes them, it's just done. Um, next up is the Marquis of Death. So this is a character from a really cool comic line. And they. this is one of the few times where I feel like they almost got like the big dial right. But they didn't have to get the big dial completely correct because uh, Marquis of Death also has a, I think it's a 60-point line. Let me see here. Yeah, a 60-point line that is equally impressive, if not better. Um, 
So the marquee has, of course, the false hope tokens. And then after the rules change, marquee became one of the very few characters that can deal more damage with pulse wave than just one when targeting anyone, uh, whether it's a single target or multiple. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do with him is just leave him in the back, get those false hope tokens pumped up, and then blast a bunch of people. Plus, he's got 10 range and prob. Uh, it's just, it feels like an imposing character, and it should, because in the comics it was. Um, number eight on my list is going to be the Chase Prisoner of Planet Doom. Out of all the Dooms, this was the one that I was most excited for, uh, mostly from a game design aspect. His dial is kind of whatever, um, but the the trait that is at the beginning of your of the game, if you are not the first player, roll a d6 on a 3 through 4, first player skips their first turn, and then on a 5 through 6, first player skips their first turn, and this game, Prisoner of Planet Doom, may choose both options for his Doom takes what he wants trait, which, of course, when he KOs an opposing character, after resolutions, you normally either choose a standard power on that character's card, uh, and Doom can use that power this game, or you choose a combat value and he modifies it plus one. So there's a small chance it's not great because you not only have to lose the roll off, but then you also have to roll a d6. But there's a small chance that this guy becomes a really big headache. And also just making your opponent skip their first turn is such a like a fun, <laughs> like cool mechanic. I wish there was more stuff like that, uh, especially when it's like you're already going second. How do you shift the momentum back to yourself and this guy is perfect for that um the storyline and like costume are really cool but i mean all of the dooms were pretty cool from that chase set moving on to the wonder woman 80th set so next up is Tolifar, the the uncommon prime from the set if you guys have watched the generic bracket series that we've been undoing on youtube um you've seen this guy in action he gives all sidekicks sidestep which is huge. Uh, he has leadership, and then he can make the Gorilla Knights, which have some of the best stats out of the sidekicks, just baseline stats, and then they also have close combat expert, I believe. So once you give them sidestep on top of that, it actually makes them pretty interesting. He also makes everyone uh, on the starting force with the Gorilla City keyword gain the Amazon keyword, but I've never once actually built around that. I've just... Put him on fun animal teams and see how many monkeys I can make. Uh, he works with Red Ghost, who also has the animal keyword. But he's really fun. Um, that'd be my number seven. Uh, from the same set is Ares. Uh, being able to make the German soldier or allied soldier is really fun. Mission point figure is really fun. We haven't had a DC Ares in quite a while, and this one's got solid stats throughout his dial, so it's just... A really fun piece. I'd like to have more deity kind of powers in the DC stuff. It feels like the de the deities in DC are like weak for some reason. Um, Zeus had like power cosmic, but for some reason Ares doesn't get it. It's just or cosmic energy, not power cosmic. But yeah, that's those are my picks from Wonder Woman. And then let's see, moving on to. X-Men Rise and Fall. Oh, no. I missed one from Wonder Woman. Um, the Uncommon Harley Quinn. So, very simple dial. It's a 50-point prob piece. It has Underworld team ability and the Wonder Woman team ability. The end of the dial gives you super senses, which with the Wonder Woman team ability lets you have a 50-50 super sense for a pretty cheap piece. Top dial gives you toughness with six clicks. Like, she usually survives a hit almost always. And then um, the best part about her to me is when Harley misses all targets of an attack after resolutions give each target an action token and she's got a full dial of Quake. So it's one of like the few times I've played a character where I wanted to miss attacks. And so it's just really fun to be able to charge up, Quake a huge group of people, give them all action tokens, or damage them. Like those are... The two options, does your opponent want to prob you out of hitting so they don't take damage, or do they want to prob you into hitting so they don't take action tokens? It's a unique little piece, and I really like how it worked. 
uh, from X Men Rise and Fall. Uh, I couldn't pick anything other than Blackheart, and that was specifically because we just haven't had Blackheart in a really long time. He works with one of my favorite sets of generics. The Hellfire Club guards are just really fun to play. Um, Hellfire Club theme team is not as fun to play because it's just a little too competitive, but Blackheart with the Hellfire Club guards is something that like you can manage com- like casually, and he's just a really interesting dial that's just got so much going on. He, I don't even want to go over it because it's just a ton of ways to heal, a ton of like free actions. Um, you give your opponent points by killing your own Hellfire Club guards, but then you make Blackheart even crazier. And then he's got Mystics to go along with his really long dial. So it's a fun piece. And I have three of them and don't know what to do with them because I don't play them that much. Uh, and then also out of X-Men Rise and Fall is Emperor Gladiator, the Prime. My only experience with Gladiator is from a few comics and then mostly the 90s X-Men animated series. And Gladiator, when he first shows up, he like just throws juggernaut like juggernaut's on a rampage and he just like throws him like across the earth to like some island and the x-men are just like whoa because up until that point they had never seen juggernaut like manhandled like that and i always want gladiator to be this big impressive powerhouse but he always gets like over costed or his stats don't quite match up but luckily this prime finally has all like enough stuff going on where he can be this giant powerhouse. He's got leadership mastermind. He can make Shi'ar soldiers. Um, then he's got the confidence tokens that allow him to reduce penetrating damage or just negate damage completely. And then his dial is, on average, he's got more 12s, 12 attacks than 11s. And then he's got a lot of clicks where he does at least 4 damage. So he's just a really cool piece. He's got two point values. He's got a lot of stuff going on, and I really like him. Now, um, going on to if I was doing uh, Empire, my next one would be the rare Deadpool from Empire that has the sideline active trait. He generates Jeff once per game, so you can have him on your sideline, pop him in, spit out a Jeff. Um, It's just a really fun sculpt. That's pretty much the whole reason why I like it. And the bystander is really fun. It's got dolphin symbol. It's got exploit with blades. If you if your opponent KOs the bystander, then Deadpool gets to use flurry and steel energy and can heal past his starting line, which means if you play him at 40 points, he can heal up to eh, okay stats and like just a longer dial basically. But um, yeah, giving him flurry and steel energy is pretty crazy. I just it's one of my favorite pieces that they've made. It's one of my favorite Deadpools that they've made because it's just got a really unique twist to it that's not like baseline heel healy heel guy that always uh does wacky stuff. And then my last figure uh that I would have picked from Empire would be the Ultron Pym. For all the reasons Calder said I really like uh mission points i really like his version of mission points because it feels like i'm shifting the game from try and ko my opponent's force to like all of a sudden it's like i have to keep this person from capturing all these like points and it's really cool that they worded him so that he works with previous ultrons and ultron drones and things of that nature i think it'll be extremely fun and casual um He's not overpowered on his own dial. Uh, he's you know he's not like running shot psychic blast or anything like that. But he does make drones and he does like completely switch how the game's played against him. So yeah, I really like him. If I was going by Hojibo's rules, uh, my last two, of course, the X Men right or not X Men Rise and Fall, the Avengers Fantastic Four Empire. Those two figures would be out, and I would have to go again, <laughs> copy and Galder's answer. The Ultimate Warrior 
getting Ooh. released was really big this year. That's one of my favorite like golden age, not really golden age. Uh, what what era did the they call that? Eighties or whatever. Yeah. Oh, what did they call that? I, before <sighs> the Attitude Era. Um, he was yeah. he was one of my favorites before like the you know back when it was just mostly posturing and like big dudes like flexing on each other kind of thing. Um, he's one of my favorites from then. Uh, I just like it makes me crave more. I really want like Jake the Snake now, and I really want that Jimmy Snuka that they previewed. Um, but yeah, it was it was really cool to get finally after almost two years another actually over two years finally getting another uh, WWE character and then uh, swapping out instead of Ultron Pym, it would have to be probably the single best 20 points in the game that has completely rearranged the meta. And that would be Scott Porter, <laughs> the bystander <laughs> that was given out. So I did get one of these from a battle Royal and uh, that was like the prize during the event was if you won a battle Royal, I think, if you got first or second, you got one. And, uh, yeah, it's triple in cap. It's a really solid little support piece. It's got team player, sidestep, uh, perplex, which perplex is kind of a commodity now that it's benched. So it does bring quite a bit to the table. It's pretty fun, and it's unique. So it's unique in more than one way, but I mostly mean that uh, you can't play them more than one on a team. But, yeah, that would be yeah. my top ten. So, uh as per Hojibo's rules, it would again be Red Ghost, Marquis of Death, Prisoner of Planet Doom, uh, Harley Quinn, Talifar, Ares, Blackheart, Emperor Gladiator, and then Ultimate Warrior, and Scott Porter. Okay, nice, dude. No, I think that is a very solid list. And I'm glad you said Scott Porter. I honestly uh, forgot about him when I was making mine. I was like, oh, yeah, Scotty P is awesome. Like, really, he really it's is just, dope. I, I really like getting real-life people getting made into clicks. I think it's really cool when that happens, whether it's, you know, uh, them doing, like, an MCU thing and we get the likeness of somebody or when it's, you know, uh, like Samuel Clemens, who almost was made, but then wasn't, even though they showed us his 3D rendering. It's cool. And a little digital dude. Ghost of Abraham Lincoln and zombie Abraham right. Lincoln. Yeah. Cool stuff like that. Especially since uh, Scott Porter is no longer trapstered and hero clicks land. It's, it's <laughs> so good. Yet another joke that we've made this episode that, that no, no one, one but will us get. gets, at least for a few months ish um but yeah no uh so let's go ahead check out this this thread dead here shall we so hojibo this dude look at this dude uh he makes a thread every year i uh, assume every year uh where he does the hero clicks fan awards top 10 favorite hero clicks of 2021 so really quick i'm not gonna go over this whole thing he's got bricks and bricks of text basically he's saying give me your top 10 figures that you thought and wow what a year blah 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 blah. um so it, he says it doesn't matter how long you've been playing the game just put in your vote for your top 10 empire and eternals are not allowed like simi and i have talked about so just to go over uh, he calculated last year's community votes. Uh, the best figure of the year that he took was Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash Doctor Doom, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, did you? He had no. He said he had 149 people vote for their top tens in 2020. So that's quite a lot of people. Uh, a lot of data, I suppose. So, uh, and I think I think that Doctor Doom was a very solid like iconic figure for that year i think there was a handful of iconic figures uh for last year so yeah uh reminder for what's legal house of x fantastic four future foundation wonder woman 80th anniversary x-men rise and fall whiz kids deep cuts fantastic four see when you take out empire man it just looks like such a sad year it's a real um, yeah short list yeah it's painfully short obviously there were the exclusives uh ghost rider lex luther grod Warrior, Wonder Woman, Jumpa, Scott Porter, all that jazz, Fulcum. Um, and then he kind of gives off some of his favorites. Uh, they're a little rough, uh, not going to lie. Um, but uh, to each their own. Um, I'm just surprised how many people are voting for Firebelly. I'm sorry. I'm just maybe getting ahead <laughs> of myself. 
But there are so many votes for Firebelly on their lists. Like, I've, what? Yeah, I have not played with Firebelly. It's just on paper, it looks not great. On paper, um, in person, yeah. on the map. Paper that is the map on that paper. He is not great. In the comic <laughs> like, he appeared in for a yeah. panel. A panel, yeah. Like it's a panel nice. where he just gets like stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not all there for Firebelly, but yeah, I mean it's a pretty simple thread, Simeon. So do you have a, a favorite top ten list here? You have a top ten list where you're just like, oh yikes. I don't yeah, know about I've... that one, Chief. <laughs> I have a uh, a bottom top ten list. Like, so this yeah. this is one that uh, I don't want to put anyone on blast. You're allowed to like whatever you like. It's fine. Put them on blast. Uh, yeah, it's. I assume everyone has their own reasons for playing, so their reasons might not match what mine are, like their goals or like how they play. But uh, Jedi Knight here five two five zero one says, okay. I am here again this year. I got 13 figures from sets made this year. So here we go. First up is my honorable mentions. And this is Future Foundation, the starter thing or Fast Force thing. It says, good figure, not enough keywords. Next up is Spider-Man from the Future Foundation, uh, the common in that set. You'll remember this Spider-Man because he had leap climb and could give sidekicks super senses. Uh, that was about it. Um, say not big on Captain Sidekick for him. Okay, that was literally okay. his only thing. So how did he make your men- honorable mentions? Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is once again Spider Man from the Future Foundation. This time from the Fast Forces. Uh, good Spider Man, but just not good enough points. Now onto the top ten. This Spider Man, of course, has Charge and Prob and. Uh, the webbed feet, web shooters, so traded in cap. But on to the top 10, the actual top 10. Uh, you might be surprised, but uh, number 10 is the Invisible Woman from Fantastic Four Future Foundation, the starter. Doesn't say why he picked this figure, but uh, she has flight, sidestep. She has uh, when an opposing character would move adjacent to Invisible Woman, you roll a d6. And then you can immediately end their action or after resolutions deal them penetrating damage depending on the roll. It has to be a four, I think. Uh, yeah, it's, and then she's got traded stealth. Uh, now we're getting into like really wacky territory. So number nine is the Human Torch from the Fantastic Four Future Foundation starter who has running shot pulse wave. Yep. Yeah. They don't really say anything about him either. Uh, and then number eight, really out of left field, is number 001 from the Fantastic Four starter set, the future Foundation starter set, Mr. Fantastic. Uh, he's got Outwit for 50 points and Barrier for some reason. Uh, also, Plasticity Giant Reach with his arm lasso trait. Um, finally, breaking the mold, out of House of X, we've got Mr. Sinister. I actually like this Mr. Sinister. He's not great. He's probably one of the okay Krakoan Revival pieces in the set. Um, beating out really not a whole lot of anyone else. It's mostly because his stealth and phasing makes him really hard to position. Uh, but he does have that uh, Krakoan Revival trait, and then he's got the special damage power that is outwit and when mr sinister uses it and chooses a standard power the target can use when he can or he can use the chosen power until your next turn which is always fun and then if the targeted character has the x-men keyword you choose an adjacent friendly character to also use the chosen power until your next turn which was interesting and sealed but he's 85 points and so he almost never saw any real kind of play for me um number six it said oh he said Finally, a Sinister with some real good keywords. Those keywords being Hellions, Marauders, Quiet Council, Ruler, Scientist, X-Men. Great. Uh, Number six on his list is the Uncommon Wolverine from House of X. This Wolverine notably is 100 points, and then less notably has traded toughness and takes a max of three damage from attacks. Uh, At the beginning of your turn, heal one. So... They say, my favorite Wolverine from 2021. I don't think it's a bad one. I just don't think it's 
I mean, we've had plenty of Wolverines to choose from. And that's as a Wolverine fan saying that. So, uh, number five. Glad we got those two House of X figures out of the way, because it's from the Fantastic Four Future Foundation starter set, number 006, Doctor Doom. 100 points for a running shot psychic blast with ESD. Uh, he's got that, once again, I prove my superiority trait, which is when an opposing character would move adjacent to Doom, you roll a D6, and then on a 4 through 6, you choose that character immediately ends their action, or after resolutions, deal him one pen. It's the same as the Sue Storm. He's a fun piece. He's got 8 range, 2 lightning bolts, but he's extremely casual, which I assume Jedi Knight here is listing off like their, their casual kind of tabletop at home game stuff um about this doom they say decent doom <laughs> which is just high praise he's decent doom he made he's number five D. on my decent top doom. 10 figures of this year but all i got he's to say <laughs> about him is decent doom, doom. Uh, doom. next up really gonna blow you out, out of the water with this one the uncommon doom from the fantastic four future Foundation no way set. what also a running shot psychic blast piece six range this time instead of eight uh he's got the ally and captain tags and then uh he's got the defend energy shield deflection and, and vulnerability so for 25 points less he's got a few more powers a little bit different stats than the previous one um and they about this one, they say a better captain slash sidekick piece. And I'm not going to read the sideline active, all that stuff, because this Doom's pretty trash. Uh, out of all the Dooms that we've yeah. gotten, this is like one of the ones that I've least looked at. Just never really bothered with that Doom. I like the ones from the, the Fantastic Four, the plain Fantastic Four set more. Uh, next up, from the Fantastic Four deep cuts is Doctor Doom. <laughs> Which I feel like this guy's HC Realms is broken, and he just he typed just in Doom do and Doctor was just Doom, like, Doctor "I'll add Doom, all three Doctor of Doom. these, yeah. the most recent ones." Uh, he typed in like the Fantastic Four keyword and <laughs> grabbed all those. Um, yeah. So this one, once again, eight range. Two lightning bolts, 100 points, armor, cabal, Fantastic Four, Latveria, mystical, ruler, scientist. He's got running shot, energy explosion, instead of psychic blast. And then after resolutions, each hit character is knocked back two squares in a direction of your choosing. And then he's got traded leadership. This is almost as bad as a point investment as the as their fifth pick, which was the Doctor Doom with an 11 attack for four with psychic blast this one has almost the same stats a little bit more mobility but the dials just i hate dials that start with esd for 100 points it's like such a big point investment to have wolverine come over and roll a six on blades um and about that doom they say doom again rules all okay enjoy your knockback is what i say to that uh number two on their top 10 here is Deep Cut's Silver Surfer. So this one is number 006 in the Deep Cuts. Uh, the, this one just has Invuln for nine clicks and then one click of regeneration with Earthbound and support. Um, the special speed power of the entire dial, because that's the only thing on the dial other than the Invuln and support regen your Earthbound on click 10. Uh, this is the only other power. It's hypersonic. When Silver Surfer uses it after resolutions, knock back each character one square that he moved through during the action in a direction of your choosing. Don't get me wrong. It's a cool power, but you're paying 120 points for that one power. Um, and yeah, it just says fantastic Silver Surfer for the points, which I guess it is indeed a Silver Surfer for the points that it is listed at which is 120 and then finally the number one and what they have to say about this figure is my number one for this year and he earned it it is from the house of x set yeah you thought i was gonna say fantastic four no no this is the rare magneto for 150 points he's he's got a couple 
point values. Mm. Uh, but he's got the special defense power that is ESD Mastermind, but he can choose a friendly character within four in line of fire instead of adjacent. He's got the special damage power that is leadership and then free. If no other character's been placed this turn, you can retal, essentially. Place Magneto such that he can make a ranged attack targeting the chosen character, and then do so only targeting that character with eight range. It's pretty fun retail. Uh, he's got all the team up card options that you could do with that one. Um, yeah, it's a this is probably the first one on this list that I agree is like a pretty solid choice. Uh, and even then, it's personally. I think we've had better Magnetos, and this one just did not hit my, like, flavor box, I guess. Um, it's just such a weird first pick. I mean... It's a weak sculpt. So here's my thing. A weak sculpt. All of yeah, these yeah, are ahead. either reused or very weak sculpts, in my opinion. Uh, nothing... And, you know, credit where it's due, this person didn't load theirs down with super rares and chases and stuff like that. It's mostly commons, uncommon starters. So there is that to like keep in mind. This could be like a budget player or just someone who prefers um, what's that disgusting format? Uh, Popper. Uh, it could be that. So this Magneto's stretching the budget by being a rare. So I get that. But man, that is <laughs> such a boring sculpt. And it, the only thing that makes this rare better is that it's not the super rare that has the exact same sculpt. That's the only thing that saves this rare from being like the worst sculpt uh, of all Magneto time. But uh, yeah, yeah. It was, that was my out of this thread, <laughs> my bottom barrel of top tens. Nothing against Jedi Knight for these picks. It's just, man, did nothing on this list resonate with me personally. Um, and I'm a fan of the Fantastic Four and Wolverine and like still nothing on this list came close to being like something that I would put on the table purposefully. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's as bad as like the IKJE guy with like half his list being Spider-Man, but that's just him not following the the format, not knowing that those right. were out in 2020, yeah, not, not 2021. 2021. Not the same as like bad picks. It's just like Oh, you don't you don't get it, do you? <laughs> you know, um, I it's I think it's kind of hard. I'm actually having a difficult time finding a list I like. I guess agree with. But I've been kind of like trying to like look through and find one because a lot of it, you know, you know, just looking at the sets that came out this year, um, it was hard for me to try to find ten figures that I really liked. Uh, my ten figures aren't even like top ten. It's like top five or top six, and then it's like, oh, I guess I liked playing these figures too. None of them am I like super jazzed about. This was, yeah, you know, we discount Empire, pretty weak year in hero clicks for my personal like likes. So I'm trying to find uh, uh, any list that doesn't have an X Men on it, basically, uh, and then that will be my favorite list uh, for this year. But I don't know if that's even possible. I don't think it's possible. I don't know. Unless someone chose all Wonder Woman, which I don't think there is, but uh, yeah, I think it's just a rough year. I think it's a rough year for Hero Clicks. Well, there was the, you get very so few for choices. Hojibo's uh, purposes on this list. There was only let's see one Marvel set that wasn't X Men, and that was Fantastic yeah. Four Future Foundation. And yeah, that's mostly the sidekick mechanic so unless someone really was like honed into just which the person i you know that jedi knight person was almost there with mostly fantastic four but uh did throw some x-men in um this one oh nope this one's got binary this one's a weird one too bionic boy here says blackbeard as 10 binary as 9 rama tut as 8 which hmm. I understand the Rama Tut choice because it's just if you like that character, if you like Kang, it makes sense. Uh, High Evolutionary Prime, Donna Troy Prime. I also like that Donna Troy, but I don't think it would come close to my top 10. Uh, Diana Prince, Ferdinand, Wonder Woman, Giganta Prime, and Wonder Woman and Jumpa. So it looks like they're mostly a fan of the Wonder Woman set, but they did throw 
binary in there to just to get Calder off their list. No, I here's uh, I think I found a list that um not one that I like, but I like the uh, gist of what this guy is doing here. So uh, before I read this list, I want everybody to know I do I do hate the Fantastic Four. Uh, but Renacon here, uh, popular realms member. He goes for favorites of this list is the main Fantastic Four from Future Foundation. So Mr. F, Human Torch, Visible Woman, The Thing. Um, then he goes Angle Man. Angle Man's a good pick. I actually think I'm probably going to replace Psycho Man with Angle Man on my list. I forgot about Angle Man, and I yeah. do like him. I, he is hilarious. Uh, he goes then High Evolutionary, Blackbeard, and then his last four are Jack, Katie, Alex, and Julie Power, which I have to – got you know, a lot of respect. Mm. A lot of respect for knowing, you know, Power Pack are a funny little team, and a lot of respect for just being a, a fan of – what you're a fan of, sir, and just being like, you know what? This is my list. I'm not gonna go anywhere because I'm I'm a I'm a power pack fan. I'm a power pack man. That's what I want to. <laughs> that's what I want to see. Looking you over know? these, if you uh, had to I guess, don't... based off okay. of like just like what we're looking at, what do you think offhand might be like the the most voted for figure Dude, out of all these? I uh, I feel like we're seeing a lot of Emperor Gladiator. I feel like he's see, popping I'm, up a yeah. lot. I'm thinking um, I've seen a lot of Emperor Gladiator. I've also seen a lot of the Prime Apocalypse. Uh, true. I'm trying to think if I've if there's been anything that sticks out more than that. Cause there's the problem is you you've got a lot of people that have different tastes, so there has to be like the one thing that hits multiple like flavors, like the casual thematic player. Uh, someone who's like more competitive, someone who just likes the character itself, that kind of thing. Um, somebody voted for Brood Queen. What a what a terrible Whoa. choice. What are they smoking? Um, but no, I I don't know. I'm thinking even that Donna Troy's gotten a couple votes across the board here. Um high evolutionary although the prime does kind of split it between people who choose the non-prime and the prime emperor gladiators gotten yeah quite a few votes the super rare hal jordan lantern is a really good option it's gotten quite uh, a few these votes. sorcerer supreme strange is popping up a lot too that's the most um the the sorcerer supreme doom yeah yeah doom yeah that's the most voted for doom i've seen and then I'm seeing yeah, like, like uh, Kate Pride. Uh, Killer King's list here is like half Doom chases, which is funny. <laughs> I mean, if you like Doom, you it's a good option. Yeah. And really, there's not like a bad one. Well, that's not true. There's a couple bad yeah, ones. Yeah, I was about to say, there's um, some bad ones. Yeah, the Valeria's pretty, compared to the rest, pretty useless. Um, yeah. Just because like... I, I, I am had surprised some we point. aren't seeing more Master Mold. I think. I've seen it on a few, yeah, but... Handful of lists, yeah. I think that is probably coming down to just a lot of people not Don't having gotten it. their hands on it or seen it in person. Yeah. Or they just forgot about it because it didn't come out in a set. Like, So when I look through these, I look through the full sets and then I go through the WizKid stuff. And yeah, so like they, maybe they just forgot about it completely because if you don't play with it or see it, doesn't make an impact. Somebody voted for Hades. Oh no. Their number one was Lalandra Naramani. Oh yikes. When you can spit yeah. out your own mastermind fodder as a fifty point figure, that's a tough KO to get. So you've got a really reliable leadership prob control <laughs> figure. Add in her synergy with Professor X and you're mixing some Shiar tactics with with the X Men. I don't know why anyone oh. would ever vote. <laughs> For Lalandra and Niramani. When also, Jason characters named Professor X, look, both characters increase their leadership roles by one. I guess that's okay, but is this is this uh is this Grant's list? Did you say Hades was on that list? Yeah, there's a Hades. Like was Hades list. was number two. I wonder. Uh, I wonder why you'd ever vote for Hades over Hades two. You know what I mean? I don't get. <laughs> I'm kind of digging the spawn figures this uh, year. Two ways to get the tortured souls out there. So, hey, Hades would be one of my favorites if he was either like 25 points cheaper or if it was easier to make the souls um like if you 
I don't know. Because, like, I still prefer the, uh, what was it, Superman, Wonder Woman, Hades more than this one. And that one costs more, but it's, like, it's a more impressive dial to me. And this dial is just, eh. Yeah. Hades is a tough out, even if opponents get through the souls. He also has the mission points thing, which I think is probably one of the hardest ways to get mission points. Yeah, yeah, it has to be a standard character within 10 squares that gets KO'd. You generate a tortured soul bystander. The tortured souls are pretty bad, but if your opponent KOs them or fails a breakaway... Oh, wait, see. Tortured soul bystander evades an attack using super senses, you gain one. Or if they fail a breakaway. But if they just kill it, then you get nothing. And so then you've... You've waited until a standard character was KO'd and then still haven't gotten a mission point if they just KO it. Um, their third pick was Dr. Moira McTaggart, the one that power action gives friendly characters rally die. I mean, I guess if you're into rally, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. The, the Felix yeah, I mean, Faust she's solid for rally. Silver Savage is a really fun sculpt and it has an object, so that makes sense. Herbert Blackheart Wyndham. This appeared to be written off as a dud of a chase, but he's really fun piece and a bit of a challenge to face. There's no more single target full damage pulse wave to get around his Mystic's one click damage combo, so it takes some dedication to get his points. You know what can really burn through old Herbert Blackheart Wyndham's dial, though? Is Eddie Guerrero or Asuka? Uh, true. <laughs> Equip Asuka with the uh, Remaker Ring, and you're dealing upwards of four free damage a turn. Um, Firstborn, that's a figure you can pick. Molecule Man, Mystique, and Shard. A lot of Molecule Man. Man. I feel like a lot of Cape Pride is also being chosen. Yeah, Cape Pride is definitely a solid choice. Um, Probably the one of the more fun X-Men, like more... Yeah, fun to play with X Men pieces that we've gotten. Um, I don't know. No, I, I mean I encourage people to pick a top ten if they, you know, if you played with enough figures this year, pick your top ten, drop it in this list. You don't have to make, you don't have to do the pictures and the dials like some people do. You can just list the numbers and the figure with the set yeah. number. Um, that's probably what I'll end up doing is that. But yeah, um, there's plenty of fun stuff. I think this was a good year for DC fans because Wonder Woman is probably, I think it'll come out in our voting that Wonder Woman 80th was the best set of the Not year. Not the most votes. I think and, so. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, Fantastic Four hit like anyone that wanted some Doom stuff or Fantastic Four stuff. Uh, and then anyone that liked Avengers stuff could choose from both of the X-Men sets, yeah. at least for this list. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, dude, what do we want to... I mean, we always rate threads 1 out of 10, but this is a fairly... I think we did this one last year as well. So I yeah. think this would be a fairly like, you know what? It's a top 10 thread. Are there some bad some bad picks? There are, you know. Yeah, personally, there's... some pretty bad uh, hot takes and things, and some weird yeah. list placements. <laughs> Looking at you, Firebelly. Um, but besides that, you know, it's a top ten thread. It's it's gonna I be whatever. It's loaded be. his list down with like the most expensive. It's like yeah, the the big three secret six figures that flash that cost like ninety dollars. Uh, the Mimic Prime, Gladiator Prime, and you know what? I'll throw in Weapon Hex just to just to cheapen out my field of figure yeah. picks here. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's some great picks. Um, and like I said, it to each their own. Like I, I don't have the same reasonings. Some people read different comics than I do. Some people like different mechanics than I do. Uh, you know, maybe you picked Herbie because you just like the cute little flying robot thing. I don't know. That's perfectly legitimate reason to pick what you pick. Uh, I just pick. I pick on the people where like I don't understand at all. Like they they must play a completely different game than me, kind of thing. And uh, like I said, it's fine. It's just my brain doesn't understand. It does not. You know, understand. I mean, there's plenty of people that are you know playing different games. Like 
uh, when you shoot somebody, you target two people with one damage, you deal them both <laughs> half the damage, you round up. Yeah, if you got one penetrating damage and two targets, and you just <laughs> split it, and then you have to round up, because everything in Hero Clicks rounds up, so yeah, you've dealt two pen damage to two different people. Just like that's, that. That's just something that I, I would intrinsically know about Hero Clicks, because I've been playing since 2007. <laughs> And I make an average of 1.9 posts on HC Realms a day for the last 14 years. So <laughs> I know things like splitting one damage between two targets. Oh, uh, that's so funny. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's that's enough fun. I uh, I don't. Oh, uh, gosh. It's hilarious. But yeah, like what Simeon said, guys, leave your top 10 in this thread. Uh, give this guy some good data. Speaking of good data, although it is important, yes, to uh, to do like the top 10 for this homies thread, make sure you comment and vote on our Discord, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you see the on YouTube, wherever you see the post. We are posting all the stuff for the Dial H Awards ceremony. Uh, so we got best sculpt, best set, worst set, uh, worst sculpt, you know, best figure of the year, worst figure of the year, like categories like that, which I think everybody pretty much has a... Um, uh, an opinion on so definitely uh, vote in all of our award ceremony that dial H award show will be coming out next week uh at the time once this is uploaded so next week we're gonna have that show out for you guys right in time for the new year so definitely check it out definitely vote in that one that's gonna be huge so you know make sure to do that that way uh we also dial H has its own good little award ceremony and we're also five weeks away. It's getting ooh, eerily close to the 400th episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. Make sure you guys uh, message, you know, Facebook, Twitter, uh, email us at Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com with what you want us to do for the 400th episode. And, you know, thanks to those for supporting us and getting us this far. Thank you to everybody on the Patreon Kevin Nelson, Lucas Van Holland, Matt Reed. Uh, all sorts of people that are joining the Patreon that mean a ton, a ton to us that help us out financially, keep the show going. Uh, thank you guys so much. So if you also want to join the Patreon, get cool t-shirts, tokens, stickers, you can check out the podcast description uh, and join the Patreon there. And, you know, another huge way to help out the podcast is by simply leaving a review. So if you want to uh, leave a review on iTunes or wherever you can leave reviews, that would also uh, be huge. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. I tell you what. I tell you what. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Have fun yeah, celebrating. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, by the time this comes out, you'll hopefully have better things to do than listen to this. But, uh, I hope so. you know, if you don't, you know, if it, if no one got you any gifts this year, maybe you go get yourself your own gift. You don't need no gift getting people for yourself. You're you're perfectly capable of heading over to CoolStuffInc.com where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 to get 5% off. Like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred instant deadpan humor. Over oh, six yeah. people oh, think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which means, you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. That's a trail.